Well, it's another day, and the uh, computer has been processing this simplified mesh for a while. Um, decided to approach the rest of the skull a little bit differently than what I was thinking yesterday, because um, I'm going to want to texture the whole thing, so I'll need access even to these, uh, or at least some of these scans uh, when, I, when I assemble the whole thing. So doing it as two separate projects may not be um, the most practical solution. So I'm, I've, uh, what I've done is I've saved the project and then reloaded it with all the scans unloaded since I'm essentially done with these until I need to texture the actual object. Um, I've just got them unloaded so they don't take up any uh, overhead, any processing overhead. And the only thing I'm going to be using uh, for reference is uh, Sharp Fusion 1 for now. But I can see that it's uh, really generated a fairly detailed mesh surface for us. Uh, we can see a lots of little details, every little pit, every little deviation in the surface. And since I've simplified this mesh, it's come down to a, a more manageable mm, almost 4 million polygons. I can't believe <laughs> 4 million polygons. That's a manageable number. That's crazy. So I'm going to uh, pick up scanning with the deer skull, uh, do, concentrating on the antlers and some regions of the first part of the scan that I missed. Uh, the teeth could sure lose some love. The, the tip of the nose didn't get quite the coverage I was hoping for. And then uh, back here around the back near the antlers where things get really complicated. So I'll hit those in the antlers starting right away. So here we are again back with the, uh, the deer skull. I'm going to start by concentrating on the area up here that I was uh, that I missed some spots on around the, the nose and I'm going to try and get a little bit deeper up inside the sinus cavity. I'm going to do this in two steps. Now one of the problems that I have with the uh, the deer sinus is that it's very long and very skinny. So if I'm looking at this point I need to see this edge right? I need to capture that data. I'm looking at that point, and that's pretty much the only thing that the scanner sees. The beams of light are going to go past it. Nothing is going to hit it, so it won't ever. It won't ever reflect, so the scanner won't have enough to track. So you lose tracking a lot of times when you try to get small, tapered features like this, especially near the very end. So what we have to do is we have to help the scanner out, and this platform with all these marks on it. That's one way of doing that. But the deer skull doesn't really want to balance on the platform. So I have to do it a different way. And so what I'm doing is the table here actually has enough variation in the texture that it would probably work, but I want a piece of geometry that's actually closer to that. So I'm going to take my little uh, my little Millennium Falcon matchbox car and I'm going to put it just under the bone itself. There's enough separation. I won't have any problem cleaning this out later on in the scan, but it'll be there and it'll be convenient. And so the scanner can use the toy to keep tracking. At least that's the idea. So we have the scanner fired up. Now I'm scanning. Part of the problem could also be coming from the bone right there on the edge being very uh, shiny. There's a glossy spot right there on the top edge of the bone that the scanner just doesn't want to get. And when it does get it, see how the data it gathers is very spiky? For that spot, I can come down here under the advanced tab and crank up the sensitivity 
just a little bit. And I see an immediate increase in the garbage data that I'm picking up around the scan. But I also see those hard to reach bits that I was having a hard time with earlier. Stopping the scan. And now I'm going to flip the deer skull over so I can get the bottom side and get the teeth and really concentrate on this. I'm pretty much done with the toy. Another little thing that I use a lot of times actually came with the Linnean Falcon. It's a, it's a little mount. You can put your little Star Wars things on it and then you can put it on your finger and you can fly them around. Zoom, zoom. But I like it for this use because it is a perfect storm of things that are hard for the scanner to see. It's, um, it's small. It's clear. It's shiny. That makes it practically invisible to the spider. So it's not really going to be a necessity for this project. But I can do something with it like I can use it to prop up my pieces or hold them still and it's a lot easier to clean out of the uh, of the scan because it's mostly invisible to the scanner. Really trying to get as much as I can of these teeth. The little nooks and crevices really didn't come out well in that last set of scans. I've lost tracking a couple of times and reacquired it, and you can see how some of the uh, some of the frames are already starting to look like they're uh, coming in kind of out of alignment. That's what that. Um, Serial registration can correct later. Looks like this is also a good view to get some of the other stuff that I missed up here. So now I'm going to start working on the antlers themselves, and they're going to provide some challenges. They're they're very smooth, so there's not a lot of uh, text or geometric deformation across the surface. There's um, a bit of um, shininess to some parts of it, so that could be an issue. And then we've got these um, right here at the tips. We're going to have the same problem with the tips that we had with the tip of the nose. It's uh, just a point sticking out there in space. And the solution to that is the same as the solution for the nose. We can come up on the sensitivity just a little bit, and we can um, put something near the tip that we're trying to get to um, sort of help the scanner out. What makes that difficult with antlers is that there's no simple way to position them a lot of times. Um, sometimes I just have to hold it and hope for the best. So now I'm scanning, and by keeping the at least that part of the antler close to the uh, the platform, it gives me something to work with. And now up here closer to the skull, the antler 
actually has enough that the scanner can just keep tracking. It's also an awkward shape. So it becomes uh, difficult to keep the antler within sight of the scanner the whole time as the scanner is moving around this uh, dramatic curvature of this antler. So now I'm trying to get the outside curve of the antler. I did a got a pretty good scan of the inside. <clears throat> got a pretty good scan of the inside curve by uh, keeping it balanced on this tray. And now I flipped it over so it's uh, sort of resting on its uh, points. But as you can see, I'm having a hard time keeping tracking on it. Carefully come around the side and try to get all the way to the tip. Sometimes it'll help to move the scanner very slowly. And sometimes apparently talking while I'm doing this is uh, trying to do one thing too many. I think I'm just about there with this antler, which I'm, I'm focusing on the left one first. <clears throat> 